Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today I'm gonna to talk about why I did not finish my financial engineering degree. So for many of you, you might not know, some of you do, uh, I went to the University of Michigan for a financial engineering degree, a uh, master's in financial engineering. Um, it was a ways back, 2012, 13. I started off in financial engineering, a huge financial engineering fan. I love financial engineering. Uh, I spent a lot of time in undergraduate researching financial engineering topics, uh, reading books about Fisher Black, Emmanuel Derman, um, Paul Wilmont, um, Paul Samuelson. In general, I have a finance background, so naturally I segued into financial engineering. Anyway, so I started the program and it was good at first. The program did a lot of coursework. We took six courses. Um, for those of you out there who are on master's degree programs, you understand average course loads like three to four courses. Um, for those of you in an MBA program, this is not the same. An MBA is not a master's degree in any way, shape, or form. It is not quantitative, but I don't want to go into the details. But taking six courses in an MBA is standard. Um, for those of you who are taking actual master's classes, this is not the same. You will understand this. So to start off with why I dropped out of the financial engineering program and actually transferred into a applied economics program was for a few reasons. Um, the big main reason was that it was just ridiculous. We were taking six courses. Uh, I was doing homework like 40 hours a week going to class, was getting not very much sleep. I felt like crap. Uh, I was treated like crap. Uh, professors didn't care about you. Program directors didn't care about you. Anyways, no one really cared and they were just grinding you as hard as possible, just trying to make it a competitive financial engineering program and keep up with everybody else. And at the end of the day, I wasn't really appreciating the way they're treating us. I wasn't learning as much as I should have been learning for the amount of money I was spending. Um, and so I didn't want to continue on with this anymore. Um, I ended up transferring to another program, which allowed us to select more electives. And I did select some financial engineering courses and use those as my electives uh, for my applied economics degree. But I ultimately decided to get out of the financial engineering program. So just to start off on other issues that I had with the financial engineering program and financial engineering programs in general across the country, um, as I work in quantitative finance, I talk to a lot of students that are actually financial engineering graduates. Um, from a variety of schools, from those of the very best of like Carnegie Mellon, Baruch, um, University of Michigan, um, University of Chicago. Anyways, the list goes on. I could list off a bunch of them. But one of the biggest disappointing facts is that the students that are in the programs do not know what financial engineering really is and do not like financial engineering. So these students can tell you all about, you know, what a derivative product is, and that's great. And that's really the heart and soul of financial engineering. However, I remember a student who was one of the top students in the program and we were all just sitting around talking one day and somebody mentioned something about Fisher Black. And the student's like, who? who who's Fisher Black? They legitimately didn't even know who Fisher Black was. And for those of you who don't know either, um, during pricing, the closed form solution that is typically used and is taught to MBAs and other people that are not quants um, is the Black-Scholes model. Uh, financial engineers will actually modify the Black-Scholes model to calculate more accurately different aspects of a derivative. Uh, however, Fisher Black is the black portion of Black-Scholes and Meyer and Scholes is the other half. So sadly, this happens a lot more than you think it does. Um, it's happened on multiple occasions. I've asked students, graduates, oh, can you tell me, have you ever read, you know, other works by Fisher Black? And a lot of times I get the response of who's Fisher Black? Uh, another example is I ran into Emmanuel Derman. Um, he's one of the leading financial engineers in the world, a student of Fisher Black. Um, amazing man, very smart. I actually ran into him at Central Park in New York City. Uh, I was walking around with my in-laws and I saw him and I was like, I think that's Emmanuel Derman. Ran back, got a picture with him, posted it on LinkedIn. And sadly, most people didn't even know who it was. And most people that are like in my group are financial engineers or people from quantitative backgrounds, and they had no clue. So it's really just disappointing. Like the students that are going into financial engineering don't wanna be financial engineers. And I think for me, that's a big, it's just like, it's hitting me deep down. Like why would you go into a program? Why are programs accepting students? Except for the fact that they wanna make money. And this kind of goes back to the thing of there's a lot of different types of students that go into financial engineering. 
Um, but a lot of them are going into it just because they understand math and that's great. But if you don't intend to be a financial engineer, why would you go into financial engineering except for, for the money? And that leads kind of to my second point, which is a lot of students in financial engineering, but not just financial engineering, it's undergraduate, graduate school, PhDs. Um, you go through life, through school, I guess, in life, you just memorize the basic formulas and you regurgitate these on exams, you pass exams, and you really have no clue what's going on. Um, I find this a big problem for me. It's more of like a moral dilemma as well as the fact that when you go to work in the real world, if you're gonna be building derivative products or you're a financial engineer building trading models, um, things blow up because you have no clue what you're doing. And I think it's a huge detriment to many of the financial engineering programs that the students are just regurgitating the exams. Um, I think that they need to get around the fact of A, just not making the exams as hard as possible. That's not gonna fix it. So like if you keep making it more difficult, that doesn't necessarily mean they understand it. But again, it comes back, I feel like the student selection, like when a student applies to these programs, they should have to re be required to give you a write, written letter on why they wanna be a financial engineer. And if it really comes down to the money and they have no clue the background of financial engineering, they don't understand the models, they don't understand the uses, it doesn't seem like they have a passion for it, you just shouldn't let them in. And so that's kind of my next pet peeve was, you know, if you don't understand financial engineering, you don't like it, you're only in it for the money, don't do it and programs shouldn't accept you. And so to top all that off, I guess the final kind of remark I'll make here is that most financial engineering students do not go on to be financial engineers. Um, again, this is just from my perspective, I don't have any data, but from many of the students I've seen in programs, uh, people I graduated with that were in my financial engineering programs, uh, that I didn't actually finish, but they did. Most of them were not financial engineers. They didn't do derivative products, um, which is okay. That's fine. You can go into quantitative finance. I work in risk management. I do quantitative finance. However, most of them don't go into quantitative finance. And a lot of them end up in like generic finance with an undergraduate job. So you literally could have came to the US, got a BBA in business, paid a lot less money, a lot less time and got the same job. Um, the life scene students go into consulting, and not even like risk consulting or quantitative finance consulting. I've seen students go into corporate finance. I've seen students do a variety of other things, which is fine. But I think there's a serious problem with financial engineering programs where you are allowing all these students to come in and yet most of them aren't even doing it for a living when they leave. But I do give a big thumbs up to programs on the East Coast. Um, I did like the fact that a lot of the top programs, especially if you're like QuantNet, I'll put a link, I guess, below somewhere. Anyways, QuantNet ranks programs. A lot of the really good programs actually have professors who are practitioners. And so I think that's a very, very good use of the programs. I think those are very good valued programs. However, many of the programs in the country, and another pet peeve of mine is all these programs are just popping up. Like every school now is a financial engineering program, a data science program. Um, there's all these like made up programs and they're just garbage, pure garbage. And these students don't get very good jobs. They all complain. And then it kind of makes me mad because it ruins the reputation of A, what a quant is, which I have another video on more or less why you're not a quant. Uh, it ruins reputations of financial engineers. And so there are a lot of programs out there that aren't legitimate programs. They don't really teach financial engineering very well. They don't have practitioners. Uh, practitioners are very important because they can teach you the ins and outs of financial engineering at a more technical level that could actually be useful in a career setting and could help lead you to actual careers in financial engineering or other types of quantitative finance. So in conclusion, I did not finish my financial engineering degree. Uh, again, I didn't feel like I was treated very well. I didn't feel like the students in the programs that I was in were very financial engineering or quantitative finance driven. And so at the end of the day, for me, it just didn't seem like a fit. Like having the piece of paper would have been great. Um, like sludging through the classes, not learning a lot, regurgitating information and just passing wouldn't have been the best idea for me. My goal is to learn as much as possible. Um, but for those of you out there that actually want to do financial engineering, I think it's a great degree. You learn a lot. Uh, it breaks the rules of academia. You're not stuck in like the one track mindset, which I feel like a lot of academic programs are kind of built for. So I definitely think it's a great degree. Uh, you should try to get it. But again, it's not for everybody. And if you go to a program that's not the best or not well put together, I think in the end of the day, it can be a big waste of money. 
So that's kind of my opinions on financial engineering degrees and why I left. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments and don't forget to subscribe and until next time. Thanks for watching my video. If you find it helpful, please like, share, and subscribe.